Hi guys, so today we're going to be learning about how to make parse geopoint queries and um, we're going to be using some starter code um, to uh, go about this and uh, that starter code is basically you know a parse demo tutorial that I put up earlier um, and I've added a couple of things to it so basically what you need to know in, uh, before you start this tutorial is you should know how uh, to use uh, the CL location manager um, to get the user's current location um, and basically we're going to build off of that and uh, learn how to do parse geopoint queries. So first things first, let's go to bitbucket.org, let's download the starter code, um, and I've put it up right here so you can say geopoint demo, and it'll show up under our mobile devs Berkeley account. We'll go to downloads, we'll go to branches, we'll, we'll download the zip. While that's downloading, let's go to parse, parse's um, iOS uh, developer guide and in there it gives us a lot of documentation it's uh, really easy to read documentation so let's take a look if we click on geopoints we select Swift it tells us everything we need to know it tells us how to make geopoints how to get the users current geopoint how to make geopoint queries so it, what we're gonna be doing is nothing too complicated and we can do it just basic, uh, basically using this information gi given to us so let's open up our project Let's click the XO project. All right, so we have our project opened up now. Uh, a couple of things you should know. Something that I added from the previous parse demo tutorial is basically, uh, you know, how to use CL. I basically added CL location manager code uh, to get the user's current location, and that's nothing too complex. Um, you should just know it before going in. Um, but that's not the emphasis of this video. But I'll give you a quick recap, anyways, of what I've added in. I've added in CL location manager delegate right here. Uh, I've, um, I've created a location manager object right here. I've um, added this code right here to authenticate uh, location uh, from the uh, user. And also in the info.plist, I've added in these two properties right here. So just something to uh, keep in mind. All right, so let's get started with parse geopoint queries. First off, let's declare um, variable parse or var query user geopoint equals or not equals we're just declaring pf geopoint and then down here let's get the user's current location first so var cur location uh, equals location manager dot location and then we will uh, so this is of type cl location and the cool thing is parse lets us make geopoint out of CL location objects so that's really convenient so the location manager gives us a CL location uh, object and now all we need to do is we need to say cur user geopoint equals pf geopoint and we see that all the constructors pop up and we'll choose the CL location constructor and we'll type in cur location right there alright so this is gonna give us the current user's geopoint, it's basically going to set it to this variable right here that we can use later in our query. Uh, next thing that we want to do is let's go to, down to where we're getting uh, our members objects and uh, let me show you um, what's going on in our database. So um, if we look back at this thing we created so long ago if we look in the users uh, data table, then I've added in this location field and I've manually put in um, some loca random locations for uh, all the different users. So um, you guys, you know, you should know how to upload, um, uh, basically upload geopoints uh, to parse already. Um, and it's not too hard to do. All you got to do is, uh, you know, get the user's current location. And now that you have this geopoint using it, you can upload it. Um, but I've already put those in there because um, we want to learn about geopoint queries in this tutorial, not you know uploading geopoints. So let's make a geopoint query. Um, so let's go to the developer guide and we'll look right here and we see some of the filters that we can add to our query. So let's add a filter and let's say query dot where key and we'll search for something and we'll say how about this one. So this uh, will basically filter our query um, by the location being um, near a geopoint within a given few miles. So if we go to 
our back end, we'll see that I've named the field location right here. So we put a location there. The geo point that we're using, we declared it up top, create user geo point. And within miles, let's say 20. So it should all be within 20 miles. Awesome. So we've added that in. And that'll only get people within 20 miles. And let's give it a run real quick to see if we're getting any um, users in our data table. And OK, so we are. Um, and one thing that I want to show you guys uh, is, you know, how um, you can use the simulator uh, to test um, things with location. So if you go to debug and you click location and you click custom location, then you can actually set up the current location that you want to use um, for your simulator. So right now I have 25 and 25 put in. So accordingly, if I look in my uh, database, then all of these geo points that are near 25 are showing up, all of them that are within 20 miles. Okay, so now that we have this, one more thing that we want to do uh, is we want to be able to show the distance um, for each of these um, uh, each of these members. We want to be able to show the distance uh, from uh, the distance set in from the geo point set in this uh, simulator. So right now we've been able to filter um, our uh, member objects and only get the ones that are within a certain radius. So we've made a geo point query there. Now let's figure out how to get the distance and display that. So if you look in the self for row at index path method, um, there's this distance label here, here that we're adding. And basically right now, I've set the distance equal to zero, but we really want to compute that distance. So in order to do that, we need the geo point from our uh, backend. So let's first get the geo point and we'll say var cell user geo point equals, um, and we can just get that in this scenario using member objects of index path dot row and location, and we'll cast that to a PF geo point. And now we want to get this distance, right? So it's really easy to get the distance using geo points. All we got to do is cur user geo point dot distance in miles to cell user geo point. So I got this geo point um, of the mem of the member that's being displayed in this cell from the back end, and then I'm getting the distance from the current user's geo point to that geo point. And afterwards, I'm just basically setting the text equal to that uh, distance plus the plus MI to make sure that whoever's using the app knows it's in miles. And let's take a look, and it's all showing. Uh, only issue there is that you know it's it's not rounding off the double, uh, but you guys can figure that out for yourselves. So let's recap what we've learned today. Basically, uh, we've learned how to make geo point queries where we filter um, objects that are within a certain uh, radius, and we've also figured out how to use PF geo points that are stored in the database, get the current geo point, and then find the distance between them. And if you take a look, these are all within our given radius of 20 miles, so everything's working. Well, awesome. Uh, thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time.